one of the fight the fight that stood out was to me on the card was the uh, co-main event which was between Mishka um I'm going to need some help saying his name Kirkinov Kirkinov Kur- Misha Kirkinov versus Ryan Span sounds yeah. like coconut <laughs> coconut yeah. yeah well Ryan Span uh, knocked him out in a very short period of time that 1 minute and 11 seconds I thought Kirkinov Mishka was g- Misha was going to win this one he's fucking big for a 36 he, he he's is quite he's quite large he's stacked he's stacked for a 36 year old yeah. uh sorry 34 and he came off right off. The, it was a. It was, there was no time to settle in that fight. Right off the bat, like Misha came out with a jab, right hook, and a head kick from the southpaw stance. Mm. And then they were just swinging. And then we had a cup kick from uh, Span. Mm. Uh, and then after that, Span sort of got a bit of breath. And as if exchanging back and forth, then Ryan just fucking knocked him down out of nowhere. And then he just started hammer fisting on him. Now, in terms of the rankings, then they're, they're not too far apart. No, but this is the, it's one of those fights that you you have to look at afterwards, uh, where once they do it, okay, next fight has got to be for the top ten in the top ten position. You get what I mean? Yeah, it's so like one of those standout long. Well, counts. he shortly said after in his post fight interview, he wants to move into the the top ten rankings now. Prior to them fighting, Misha was actually at 11. However, mm. earlier he was actually at 10. Mm-hmm. Um, ov- obviously, the rankings are very fluid. They can move around because other people are fighting at, th- at different times. However, Span said, look, when I was supposed to fight him, he was number 10. I want to be number 10 now, now that I've knocked him out in this fashion. And I can completely agree. Completely agree. Uh, well, his last fight, well, he snapped his one fight uh, losing streak, which was against uh, Johnny Walker. Mm-hmm. He actually uh, was looking impressive in the, in the first round against Johnny Walker. But, you know, he was st- starting to actually, you know, travel down to him, down to the ground. And he actually said, look, that wasn't the right decision. And he was actually being a little bit more patient when he was striking with Misha. He certainly got dynamite in his hands and he did incredibly well. Incredibly well. Yeah, uh, the... He's def- yeah, uh, to come off of a loss to Johnny Walker like that, I mean, it's definitely uh, some time back into the game. One person who I would I recommend would be nice to fight him to fight next who could be, let's say, Nikita Karlov because uh, he had a really good fight uh, a couple of weeks back. Yeah, a couple of weeks back he yeah. fought. Yeah. Or maybe you give him a rematch with Johnny Walker. Yeah. Uh, Possibly. Uh, Johnny Walker has currently got a torn peck at the moment, so yeah. it can be a, a oh, difficult Oh, okay, so he can't really for him. Mm, probably not. No, it, it's still an issue. That's why he pulled out of his fight against Jimmy Crute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, actually, just, uh, speaking of Jimmy Crute, and I know this is a quick aside, but Jimmy Crute actually... Um, he's fighting Anthony Smith. In, yes. Yeah, he's fighting Anthony Smith at the end of this month, I believe. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I was told. Yeah, go on, sorry. Did, did you know that uh, he has been living in a in a van for quite some time? So in the last few months, he's actually, he's bought a house. So he's now moved out of his little uh, van that he's been living in, which he parks uh, behind his Melbourne uh, gym. And uh, he's now actually moved in a house thanks to acquiring some more 50k wind bosun. Bonuses. Now, he's just came off a win against Modestus Bukorkis, who I actually had a chat with um, probably o- just over a month ago because yeah. he's going to be fighting at UFC 260. Brilliant guy. Yeah. You should check out that interview. Um, but I'm impressed with Jimmy Cree because now he's actually, uh, you know, he's moved out of the, out of his van. Yeah. He's got a house now, which is incredible to hear from a fellow Australian fighter. Yes. And now he's going to be fighting instead of John E. Walker, he's now going to be fighting Anthony Smith. Yes. The reason why I bring up Jimmy Crew is Ryan Spann actually said, look, um, he wasn't so much interested in Johnny Walker. In his post-fight interview, he also said, look, I want to be in the top 10, but I also want to fight the winner of Anthony Smith and Jimmy Crew. Mm-hmm. And I completely agree. That's yep. who he wants to see. So if he really gets his way, he could be fighting against Anthony Smith, who's number six, and uh, Jimmy Crute, number 12. So that there's a huge disparity uh, between that. So um, interesting to see what could happen next. I've also heard thoughts of maybe Vulcan Ozdemir um, being a possible... Uh, I know Dean Thomas mentioned that Vulcan Ozdemir would be a good matchup for Ryan Spann um, at number eight. So if he quickly moves 
uh, into the number 11 spot or the number 10 since num- uh, Johnny Walker, um, he did lose to Johnny Walker. However, he could be set at number 11 still. Uh, he will need to fight uh, someone in the between 5 to 10. And I think the winner of Anthony Smith and Jimmy Crute or Volkanovs Demir, that would be incredible. Or Nikki, uh, Nikita Krylov because um, Krylov is coming off a loss uh, a couple of weeks ago. Was it not? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that is inc- incredible from Ryan Spann. Uh, I can't wait to see him. Another, he did incredibly in the first round. I can't wait for him to fight someone in the in the top 10 now. Yeah. Yep. Incredible. Uh, I mean, uh, the, it's uh, just... I was just going to say, it's just, a, it's just a matter of paying attention to the, to these fight nights now. Like, mm. when it comes to these fight nights, they, they like to pick a lot of fighters that are sort of outside of the top 10. You know, give them a... To some, build up their names Yeah, give bit, up their names. Yeah. That's, that's what I appreciate the most. Especially when ESPN Plus has got yeah. free UFC fight nights. That's what I was noticing. They're yeah. able to get a little bit more watched eyes on them. Yeah. Um, typically, it's, it's nice being in that bottom bit rather than the middle. Because you could be at the very top, like you could be on a Conor McGregor undercard. Tons of people have paid, obviously. Yeah. They're going to watch you. Yeah. Or you can be at a UFC fight night, which is a free fight through USP, UFC ESPN. You can watch the main card, the prelims, the early prelims. Yeah. It's really good. The bit in the middle, which are those kind of UFC cards that are like, they're okay, but they're not stacked. or yeah. have a lot of hype behind them. It's difficult to get a lot of name yeah. value there. So being at the very bottom of the UFC fight nights... It's brilliant for you to move in the top 10 and a lot of people are watching and going, hey, uh, I remember that guy from the, the yeah, fight because, night. Yeah, because now the once, when you've accumulated and you've watched all these fight cards, now when you go and watch a fight night, mm. if you're not, if you, sorry, if you go and watch an actual fight, um, big UFC event, and you understand who the people are and what their background is and who they've won to get to that position rather than just some casual who just wants to go in there and watch the fight, you know, just watch the main event.